It's time for Advent of Code 2021, day number five. And if you don't know what's going on here, read the description on YouTube, because I'm not wasting any time. We got to get started. Okay. Hydrothermal Venture. I'm just going to make my files really quick here. Nice, okay. Let's get reading, and let's read more carefully so we don't mess up like yesterday. You come across a field of hydrothermal vents. Let's read about hydrothermal vents. Yeah, it's hole in the ground where the you know, lava, hot air comes out. That's what I thought, okay. The vents produce large opaque clouds, so I can't see them. Oh, and it'd be best to avoid them, yeah. They tend to form in lines, the submarine helpfully produces a list of nearby lines of vents for you to review. For example, all right. So somebody on YouTube yesterday suggested that we actually use the puzzle in the, the test, he this, you know, the, the example input as a test input. And I think that's a really good idea. So I'm going to be saving this to like test input.txt and using test input.txt. And then once we get these correct answers here, then we'll switch over to the real input.txt. Um, and hopefully that'll give us the right answer on the first go. Anyway, uh, nearby lines of vents to review. So here's our, here's our lines. And I assume that this is a line that starts at 0, 9, x, y, and goes to 5, 9. So this would be a horizontal line of length 5. This would be a diagonal line that goes from 8, 0. So over to the right and it ends up at zero eight so it's a line that goes from down from to the right to the up like that okay anyway each line represents events a given line segment x y x right x y y y x yep where x y are the coordinates of one of the line segments and are the coordinates of the other end include points at both ends and then you know converts points oh so there's points so it's 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 all the points that the line passes through so you figure out the slope of the line. So in this case, the slope is like, you know, one comma one, right? And then you basically iterate by adding to this, you know, ding, 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 and you build up a bunch of points and, you know, on the integers and so you get, and this one would be one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And this one, see from three, four to one, four, you get, it would be just three, four, two, four, one, four. Here we go. Here's here's a good one, right? So from six four to two o. So the slope on this is going to be uh, three, right? So this the it, right. So three here from two to six. Six divided by two is going to be three stops, and four o. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to math this. <laughs> y equals uh, right. Y equals x plus whatever. Um, yeah. Consider your horizontal, oh, only consider your horizontal and vertical lines. Oh, so I see. So, um, we're, we're good thing we're reading carefully, but yeah. So this would actually be thrown out on part one. I'm guessing on part two, we're not going to be throwing these out, but for part one, we're ignoring these. So we have to code in such a way that um, we can do these, right? We're going to code uh, uh, something that supports all the possible ones, but we're going to have a flag that filters out the non-vertical, non-horizontal lines. And then in part two, we'll just remove that flag, and hopefully that will get us the right answer on part two. All right. So either horizontal or vertical lines would produce the following diagram. Oh, diagram. Why are there ones and twos? Why are there twos here? Hold on. Coordinates of one end of line segment and the coordinates of the other end. In other words. Right. Oh, I see. So this one means that right, so this is a line. This this little one one. And this is a line. And this is a line. But, see, this is actually intersecting. Two lines intersect at this point. So you're basically, we're building up 
uh, a list, right, of points, individual points, right? One, 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 two, one, three. Okay, so that's three ones, right? At, at one, 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 two, one, three. On the, uh, oh, well, it would be one, 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 two, one, three. Or I guess if you considered the bottom left to be zero, zero, it'd be one, 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 two, one, three. And then if another line comes along, let's say, you know, uh, zero, well, it'll be one, 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 two, one, three, because zero, zero is down here. Yeah. Um, and then if you get, say, zero, three, one, three, well, now that's the second time that this point has been hit by one of the lines. So that increases the, the, the digit. The top left corner is zero, zero. Okay, that's fine. You know, it doesn't really matter. The bottom right is nine, nine. The number of lines which cover that point. Or a dot if no line covers that point. The top left pair of ones, for example, comes from two, 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 one. Yeah, the very bottom. Yeah, okay, overlapping it. You need to determine the number of points where at least two lines overlap. In the above example, this is anywhere in the diagram with a two or larger, a total of five points. How many points do at least, so we're counting the number of right times the number of points that occur more than once okay so let's do what the someone suggested which is we're going to make uh test input dot text okay and then let's make uh real input dot text oh boy <laughs> uh. okay cool so we're actually going to start here with Test input dot text. All right, that's our first go. All right, so we're gonna parse. We gotta parse this input though. So let's look at let's look at these. Um, so where it's number common number, with this little arrow, and then two more numbers. Okay, so let's go in down here. Let's call test input equals 309 comma 347. I could copy paste, but you know, uh, 464. Okay. So we go ti dot, we could do a regular expression here actually to parse these out. I haven't used the regex yet, but I feel like I don't have to. Because we can split like this, right? We can do split, and then on each half, right? So uh, we can be like, we can do tuple, and then we can do start, uh, start, end, and now we got start and end. And then we can do start dot strip dot split. Oh. <laughs> and then we could do in x for x in. And there you go. You got your start. And you got your end. Right? So <laughs> that's um that's easier than a regex because I didn't have to, you know. So let's go. Let's go for that method. Okay. So what the data structure we're going to store these in is, I guess, a list of tuple tuples, a list of tuple pairs, right? For start and end. Um. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, the parsed input is going to be a list. That's good. So for each line, 
we're going to do a, uh, what did we do? We did a split on the arrows. All right, so we did a start and equals tuple line dot split on the arrow. Okay. And then we're gonna, uh, well, we'll say raw start and raw end because they're still strings. And then we'll actually start will be equal to raw start dot strip uh, dot split on the comma in x for x in. Can we do a tuple comprehension? Will that work? Oh, it makes a generator. I don't think we want that. I mean, we could, it wouldn't really matter, but. I don't think you can index the generator, right? Yeah, it's not subscriptable, so. We'll just do this. Okay, let's run. And that should print out our parsed input, which looks correct. Right? See, we have a, here's a line, goes from 0, 9 to 5, 9. Yeah, okay, let's try it with our real input.txt. Let's actually, here, we do this. This will be faster to switch between the two this way. Looks good. Terrific. Go back to our test input. Okay. So now we have our list of lines. Um, and what we need to do is we're going to filter, we're going to, let's make the filter thing because we're just going to simply remove that filter on part two. So, uh, the filter is going to be removing any line. We're basically going to take the list and we're going to filter out where either the two, right, we only want ones where either the X or the Y are equal. Okay. We'll call it the uh, <laughs> uh, the straight filter. Yeah, because it's oh the straight line filter because it's only uh, lines, right? So for line and lines, so each line looks like. You know, one of these two, one of these tuples that contains two tuples, right? So, start end equals line, right? I'll call it a new, uh, new oh filtered lines, right? So basically, we're saying so now we'll say uh, if uh, start zero equals end zero, oh is horizontal equals start zero and zero. All right, so that means the X, uh, no, that would actually be vertical, right? If the X coordinates are the same, that means only the Y is changing and the line is going up and down. And then is horizontal is gonna be like this. And then we'll say if is horizontal or uh, we'll do the vertical first because that's the order is vertical. Or if either one is true, then filtered lines dot append line return the filtered lines. Very nice. Okay, so we could run this with the test input. Oh, we forgot we took out our print. <laughs> oh, we still needed that. Because we're not done. Oh no, we, we have the parsed input. We need to we need to print the uh the filtered lines 
is equal to straight line filter the parsed input. Actually, we can just do this. We can do uh, all all lines, all lines, and filtered lines. Let's print all lines also. Print all. Because we're still on the test input, so it won't be too ridiculous to read through. Yeah, it looks right. So here, this is a straight line. The nines are equal. That's a straight line. The fours, straight line. The twos, straight line, straight line, straight line. And the ones that are missing, here's a, here's a not straight line, and it's not present down here. That seems correct. Cool. Um, now, let us find what we need to do is for a given line, we need to get, generate all the points from that line. And we need to write it in such a way that it can handle uh, straight lines, but also not so straight lines. Um, I'm hoping that will help us out on part two. <laughs> um, okay, so. Let's let's make generate points on line. Def uh get points on line. And it's gonna take in a single line, right? So the start end is equal on the line. Okay, so uh the start and end are already in the points. So we're actually gonna do the points, right? And the it's inclusive. Let's just verify that it's inclusive. An entry like one 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 three covers one one and one three. It's inclusive, correct? Good. So that means that you just start off right away, right, by doing points dot append start and end. Just just throw them in there, right? Now we need to figure out the slope. Um, So, but we only want to land on integer spots, right? So let's let's come up with let's say that you have a one. We're gonna do the diagonal case, right? Because the diagonal case will work for the horizontal case. So let's say you're at one, one, to um something that's uh two, four. Okay. So in this case, right? What would the points? What would the points be? Right, so the slope here is going to be one. Got to like do this on paper, but I you can't see if I do it on paper. Uh, I think these would be the only two points. Right, these would be the only two points, because you'd go right, you'd move over one and you jump three. So let's um. Let's do this. Does this have more points now? I suppose what you do is you find the real slope, right? Like ev the float slope, right? Not as like, you know, so the slope here would be like, you know, two and three, right? Um, two over three, right? The change in X over the change in Y. X1, X2 minus X1 over Y2 minus Y1. So if the slope is two over three here, you're not... Um, right, and then you just add, right, that slope to this until you're equal to this. And if any of the stops along the way happen to be exactly two integers, then you record that as a point. Um, right, because the slope of all the horizontal and horizontal and vertical lines is going to be zero, one, or one, zero. Right. Um uh and one zero is obviously you gotta be careful with your divide by zero situation. Uh yeah, you get the real slope and then you right, so let's see. Uh, slope of line. I'm pretty sure it's x2 minus x1 over y2 minus y1. But I haven't done this since middle school. 
Yeah, change in y divided by change in x, right? Yep. So let's make a little get a get slope just to do that. Well, actually, let's think about this a bit more, right? So the slope here, let's do something. Let's do something bigger, All right? So three four is going to be two three. So let's if we change this to six eight, okay? So now we've got a five seven. No, let's do a seven nine. Okay. So now our slope is six eight. Right? Uh, it's, you know, change in X was six and the change in Y was eight. And then we reduce that, right? So six, eight can be reduced and, and still be integers, right? There's a common factor of two. So six, eight, you could reduce that to three, four, right? And then you would have an intervening point of four, five, so it would be 1, 1, 4, 5, 7, 9. So what you want to do is you want to get the, the x2 minus x1 and the y2 minus y1, right? And see, is there a common uh, factor between them? And if there is, reduce it to... Um, right? So you want to find the common factors between the two numbers and then divide them both to, to reduce them. And then that's your integer slope. And then you iteratively add the integer slope to uh, the smaller of the two. Because um, we're going to have like negative lines here, right? Um, so I guess if it's a negative line, you would add it to the right side. Uh, I guess even if it, if it's just negative, you, they might just be like this. It might be like negative three comma positive four, right? Something like that. It's, you just keep the you got to keep the signs uh, on the slopes because you know you do, right? So it would be uh, and a negative one, all right? So imagine one uh, seven nine uh, one one. It would be negative three, negative four would be your slope, and you would subtract the three from the seven to get the, the the four, and subtract the four from the nine to get the five, and then you would get your your intervening four or five point. Um, so you got to keep the negatives, but still find a common factor between two positive or negative numbers, shrink them, and then iteratively apply this to the left number. Right? As long as you keep the signs, you can always just start with the left number and keep applying this until you are equal to this, the end number, and those are your intervening points. So we need a thing to find common factors. I wonder if there's a function for that. Let's see. Python find common factors of integers. All right, how to find the common factor of two numbers. Uh, print factors. Okay. GCD is there from fractions. Import greatest common denominator. That looks good. There's a function that exists. Common factor of two numbers. Let's just try using that function. Well, let's look up that function. Python GCD. GCD and Python. All right, let's just try calling it. Let's just try it. Let's see what it does. From fractions, import GCD. Uh, the, so the, so we our example was what? 6-8? Uh, Two. Yeah, and then we could just define if, if... So what happens if there isn't one? It would be one, wouldn't it? Yeah. So actually, even if it's one, that's fine. We just, we get GCD... And we just divide both numbers by GCD, right? And then that's our that's our integer slope um, that we can iterate with. Okay.
support fractions. Cool. So now what we do is we say, okay, we go uh, x delta equals start zero. Well, okay. N zero minus start zero. Y delta equals uh, N one minus start one. Okay, G, uh, the GC, uh, I don't want to use GCD because that's the name of the function. <laughs> Denominator, uh, common, I'll make a bit, oop, I made it, okay. Common denominator equals GCD x delta y delta, uh, x this avoids, by not actually dividing here, um, we can avoid, uh, by not actually creating the slope itself as a fraction. If we create the slope itself as a fraction, then, you know, the we might end up putting the zero on the bottom. By not doing that, we can avoid divide by zero error. So we can say x slope equals um x delta divided by common denominator and then we can say y slope y delta divided by common denominator okay and then we can say um uh current point equals the start and then we can say while current point is not equal to the end right? so as soon as the current point is equal to the end then we're right um what we'll do is we'll say current point is equal to now what we'll do is we'll say a new x is equal to current point. Let's do this. X, Y is equal to the current point. There we go. Uh, new x is equal to, um, you know, we can actually, do we need this here or can we can incorporate that in here, All right? think we can do it in here. We can just depend the current point. So that the current point so that the start will immediately go into the the points. Okay? Then we'll say we'll extract the xy new x equals x plus x slope new y y plus y slope so we can actually say current point equals x plus x slope comma y plus y right uh, we got all kinds of errors going on here what are they complaining about fractions imported but unused uh, there we go. Still having problems with the uh, keyboard shortcuts in the problems <laughs> dialogue there. Okay, where are we at? We're almost there, actually. Um, Cool. So then we get a new current point. While current point is not equal to the end, right? So we, we, we append the start, we update it, we get a new point, we come around, we say, is that the end one? Right? If it's not, we're going to add it to the list again and continue. And then here we do have to do, to get the end one, we are going to have to do points append current point. Actually, we can do while well, current point 
Yeah, because um, yeah, we'll we'll just do. We could change this to say while well, current point is less than or equal to the end, right? Because then it would get too big. It would be bigger than the end. And then this would end the loop, and then we wouldn't have to do a second append. But the other option is just do this. That works also. So we'll do all the points up to the end, and then the end. Um, and then, so this should maintain negativeness, right? The negativeness should work. So this is going to get the points on the line. And oh, we got to return the points. Cool. Um, so you want to get points on all lines. Right? Because down here, we've got the filtered lines. So what we want to do is all points. Uh, I think there's a, a counters thing we can use. Someone told me. Get out of here. Python collections counter. Collections counter counter. Counting hashable objects. So uh, new counter from a mapping. A new counter from keyword args. Let's try this thing out. Just down here, from collections, import counter. So what if we uh, do a counter of like one, two, three? So there's one, 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 two, and one, three. Okay, so we can do counter, let's see, zero, one, right? So we're gonna do, we're gonna try counting, uh, you know, coordinates, zero, one. There should be two zero ones and a two, two. That's it. Oh, I messed up the, nope, get back here. So this would be a zero one, a zero one, and a one two. Yep, sure enough, there's two zero ones and a one two, right? And then, uh, can we index this thing? Can we filter it? Uh, for a point count in counter to items, can we do items here? Yep, we can do items there. Cool. Which means that we can, in this kind of loop, we can say if if count greater than one, right? Then we've got our we can filter that uh, that as well. So let's use let's use that. Let's use that function. So anyway, we're going to get the points on all lines. So all points is just going to be a list, and then we're going to count. We're going to count those. Uh, cool. So. For line in lines, uh, get points on line. So that's all the points. And then we're going to append all those points to all points. Let me just see so the problem. All right, so let's, let's pretend all points. Let's just do this with integers here for a second. New points equals one, two, three. More points equals two, three, four. So all point. See if we do uh plus equals new points. All point. All point. More points. Yeah. So we could do plus equals. We'll just add them in, as opposed to append, which would add the list itself as an object unless we iterated. So that's actually. Um, all points plus equals turn all points. Okay. And the final thing would be to, uh, get, oh, find points. Oh, find, uh, colliding points. Uh, for points, right? So now we're now we're going to use our co the collision 
the, the, the counting that we talked about. For point count in collections.counter points. If oh, I'm gonna say uh colliding points is e is here. If count is greater than one, colliding points. Right, throw that point into the colliding points. Cool. Some got some kind of spelling error here or something. Kalinding, that's what we got. Kalinding, perfect. Okay, so um, we're gonna have to call get points on all lines and then find colliding points. And what the answer, they wanted us to give us the number of colliding points, I believe. The number of points where at least two lines overlap. So we're gonna get the length of the, the length of the find colliding points is going to be our answer. Cool. All right. So there's our filtered lines. Uh, we're going to say all points equals get points on all lines, filtered, li uh, filtered lines. And then we're going to say colliding points equals find colliding points on all points. And the part one result is going to be the length of colliding points. Okay, we got our test input. So given the test input, the answer should be five. Right? So if we run this and we see a five, then we know we're good. Right? We got errors. Um, what's the error? Fractions has no attribute GCD. Do we have to do from fractions import GCD? Let's just check some more documentation. Python fractions GCD. Fractions GCD. Oh, the math.gcd function is now used. Okay. Math. Try again. Uh huh. Int object is not iterable. Why is the point an int? Count point is zero. What's up with that? That's a problem. Let's go back up here. Start end. Current point equals start. Well, let's see. Start is indeed a uh, the, the location. No, these are all from uh, yesterday. X, Y, current point, start, and points. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, it, the already got added. Zero and nine are X. All right, the current point is one comma nine. Yep. Oh right, what one, one comma? Oh, we got we got some we got to do some int casting here on the division. Uh, no, we don't. We don't want to. We don't want to int the slopes. Hmm. What well, we know? Well, we know because we have a greatest common denominator. We know that every spot here is going to be um. Right, int. We know it's always going to be a point zero.
So it's zero nine, one nine, two nine. Yep. Looking good. Looking good. So that part seems to be functioning. Um, so the part that's not functioning is here, the colliding points. Int object is not iterable. Count is nine and point is zero. For point count in collections.counter points. So points here doesn't seem to, yeah, it only contains points. So this must be something with the counter. Um, Oh, I know. We forgot to do the dot items. That's what we forgot. Simple, simple solve. Part 110. Okay, so we got a problem there. Uh, we got double somehow. The correct number. Um, so let's figure that out. Uh, find colliding points. Okay, so the points we have here, all right, let's look at the counter. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five twos here, and we're getting a 10 down here. So find colliding points. Let's, let's move the breakpoint down here. And check on the uh, colliding points ah so the colliding points is having a problem zero nine one nine two nine seven it's it's putting in both halves of the um right so this here we do want the append there we go and that should do it Yep, now we have our five. Terrific. So now that we have our five, we can switch to our regular input. And 6113. That's the right answer. Hey, yo. One gold star is part two. Please just be diagonal lines and nothing else because we're going to be done so fast. Okay. Doesn't have the full victory. You need to consider diagonal lines. I did already. <laughs> because the limits of the hydro, the lines of your list will only be horizontal or diagonal at exactly 45 degrees. I know. Oh, wait a minute. Exactly 45 degrees. Uh-oh. Well, I mean... It, does that mean the input only contains lines um, that are 45 degrees, or is then I have to still filter? Do I still have to filter is the question, which means do they give me any lines in the input that the lines in your list will only ever be or exactly 45 degrees? Okay, so my solution works even if they're not 45 degrees, but assuming the input will only ever give us lines that are 45 degrees. Um, we're going to be okay with this one, um, I think. Because <laughs> uh, the slopes will always are either going to be, right, just by the nature of the math, 
if the input doesn't contain a line that say goes from like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, if it's only a 45 degree line, all the slopes are always going to be like one, one or negative one, negative one or such and such. So I think it, as long as the input doesn't require filtering, I think it's still gonna work. Um, all lines of example now produce the following diagram. Okay, so we can actually run the test. We're gonna run with the test input and see if we get a 12, right? Number of points for these two lines overlap. In this example, there's still anywhere in the diagram with a two or larger, total of 12. So let's run our test input without the filter and see if we get a 12. And we might be done very quickly here. So um, we just have to do these three things. But we're going to change this to all lines. And we should see a 12 here. Oh, wait, no, we got to switch to the test input. That was promising, though. That was promising that that worked. It is a 12. So I think 20373 is going to be our answer. I think it's going to be 20373. Yes, <laughs> that's the right answer. We did a good job when part two just takes a very short amount of time. We're done with day five. See you tomorrow.